Y'all, what up? This is Nick, head coach of the Cerulean City Celtics, doing commentary for my first week of playoffs, fighting against Brendan of the Cinnabar Island Cyndaquils. So we're going to throw down right now. This was, I think this is the first season. This is our third season in the league. I think this is my first season making it to the playoffs. So good job, me. I'm proud of myself. And uh, he leads off with his gotta sweep, which is understandable. He knows that a common lead, everybody knows that a common lead is my Rotom, so a lot of people plan for it. So uh, there was no way I was staying into that because fuck that noise. So high tech comes in because I know even if he slings out a secret sword with the minus one for my intimidate, at best that does like 30% damage and I can easily KO him. But he went for the leaf blade, which really doesn't do all that much damage and shows that he has a life orb. So that was something where right now I went for a knockoff because I'm like, nah, fuck that. We're not letting you get that 30% extra damage every turn. No, thank you. And he brought the absolute wrong Pokemon into this knockoff, so that just straight up blows him out of the park. So, both of us are kind of surprised by that, but uh, both of us seem to have incorrectly run our calcs before the battle. Which, uh, yeah, that certainly KOs him. And he brings Gotta Sweet back in. Now, I'm not sure why I switched out. I could have just killed him. Because I could have just gone for the flamethrower which would have easily killed him and he only could have done 50% damage to me even at full HP or like full attack and uh, yeah I don't know why I thought he was gonna double switch or something I don't know what I did there but Dino Plant comes in next to take this knockoff that is coming out because I, I knew the knockoff was coming out so I'm like okay bring in somebody who's not gonna lose their item and then he's gonna leave because if I bring him out he's got to know that I've got hidden power fire so here comes the big mama, unsurprisingly. And I'm going mega this turn. So yeah, big mama was a bit of a problem for me this battle. This thing's special defense is just so fucking good that I really couldn't do all that much to it most of the time. So as you can see, I did enough for its leftovers to just heal it pretty much back to full with that hidden power fire. So not looking great. So I'm like, okay, he's just a special attacker. No point leaving him out. So I bring in Landfill, which he was probably a big confuser. I was expecting a um, Thunder Wave to try and paralyze my Venusaur, just because that's something he's run before on his Blissey. And I set up my Reflect, because I'm like, okay, I know he's got a lot of physical attackers, so let's set up a Reflect so that I'm not getting just obliterated by them. And these Seismic Tosses are surprisingly scary on the Landfill, because this dude only has 157 health. Because this one doesn't have any investment, I don't think. So I go for the defog, which means I'm going to get hit for another 50 damage. Which is less than ideal when you have such little HP. Because at this point, he's, yeah, he's in the yellow. He's at like half health from Blissey fighting him. So now I decide it's time. Okay, we're going to get out of there. Someone else who can come in and take 50, da or, yeah, 50 damage and not really care about it. I could, I should have had Pain Split against that Blissey, that would have been smart. But then here's another Pokemon who, I mean he has decent health, but he doesn't have any recovery. So he goes up for those Stealth Rocks again, but I, I, this was a good time to bring High Tech in because there were no Stealth Rocks, so I didn't have to worry, and I can scare the shit out of Blissey. And now, one thing I did bring on Incineroar because I was expecting the possibility of a Alolan Ninetales is I did bring a, uh, whatchamacallit, Brick Break, but I went for the knockoff here because I was like, well, if I can get rid of Blissey's leftovers, that'll be good. I don't have to worry too much about it healing consistently. And he goes for the knockoff, which does no damage, but does get rid of my Assault Vest, which I was a bit upset about, but I guess it doesn't really matter all that much because he didn't bring a huge special attacking crew this week. And now I bring in one of my special attackers, Charlotte, and this turn I think yeah, the, the stones were up, so that was not good for me. And Charlotte is also a very low HP Pokemon, so it's not a good thing. And uh, since the ground-type Pokemon is dead, I can just throw down electric attacks all I want. So here comes this big compound eyes thunder, which really doesn't do anything to Blissey, which sucks. I should have just set up my sticky web, which I think I might do next turn. Just because it's like, I can get a free sticky web up. Because... Oh, well, actually, no, I think, yeah, I just straight up switch Charlie back because 50 damage is half of, more than half of what I have left. 
So I bring him in again. I bring in High Tech, who's going to eat the Seismic Toss. And Stealth Rocks. That was... Yeah. Yeah, this, these Seismic Toss were just such a problem, because that meant I couldn't bring in... Um, what's his face? I couldn't bring in Rotom, because he would take some damage. He would, he would die from two attacks. So I really didn't want to leave Rotom to die just to get rid of some Stealth Rocks, which Brendan could easily just set back up. So a Brick Break comes out, and that doesn't do that much. I really thought it would do more, but I guess... I mean, Mandibuzz is a pretty bulky Pokemon, so I guess that does make sense. Some normal non-stab damage. And now High Tech is very much not looking to be in a good state. And I U-turn, which does more, or about the same amount of damage, I think. But now, now I can bring Landfill in. Because I know, well, he's not going to take huge damage from this thing. He might get knocked off, but if this thing decides to stay in, it's going to get killed. So I think I just go for, yeah, the Hydro Pump, which is enough to kill Roadkill, I think. No, not enough to kill Roadkill, which sucks. Because I did avoid the Toxic, though, so that was actually super good. And I heal up a little bit, so I'm back where I started. So he brings out Roadkill because he doesn't want Roadkill to die just yet. And I think I just went for the Free Volt Switch. Yeah, I should have defogged, because at this point now, I can't bring Rotom back in and survive against Blissey. And I, so that means I can't really clear the Stealth Rocks without sacrificing Rotom. So X comes out, and I know this is another physical attacker, so Big Mama is not safe, except she kind of is, because... Oh no. Right. Since Roadkill was still around, I did not use my Z-Move. So I just went straight up for the Ice Punch, because I was like... He's probably going to bring Roadkill in. Let's just guarantee the kill against it. And down goes Roadkill. He may have been expecting a Zen Headbutt or something, but nah, I was like, we got to deal with that boy. And I think here, another oh thing was I couldn't do enough damage to Gotta Sweep to KO him. So I switch out and just totally sacrifice Horus here. So what up, dude? Goodbye, dude. <laughs> He just, yeah, he was kind of a sacrificial lamb at that point, because I'm like, well, he's not going to do much help for me, because I don't need that much speed. And now we get a beast boost out of Gotta Sweep, and I think this is when I, oh no, Dino Plant comes in, so I'm like, yeah, even at a plus one, I think I can survive him, but I think he had just enough HP for this, like, I think it was, like, the perfect scenario for this Smart Strike to get the KO. So at this point, I sent a GG to Brandon, because I'm like, it's fucking over. He's at a plus two. There's nothing I can do because Incineroar can't come in because he's weak to the Stealth Rocks. So I'm like, okay, let's bring in Charlotte and see if I'm faster than him. Because that's the only thing I had going for me right now is I'm like, I have to be faster than this Kartana. Which I was faster than Kartana because he did not go with a speed investment. It was a jolly nature with no investment, so that was more than enough to kill him. So that was something where if he would have switched and brought in his um, Blissey again it pretty much would have been over because Charlotte wouldn't be able to safely come back in and Strider could probably sweep my team. So him leaving that in there was not a great idea and obviously Greninja's faster than me. If I would have set up my uh, thing earlier, if I would have set up my sticky web, I would have been faster still, but instead I went for the, the attack and wasn't quite as smart. So right here is when I also find out that he put a choice scarf on his Greninja, which was a bad idea. Like, he did a no-speed investment Choice Scarf, which would still make him really fast, but it really screwed him over because then he has to lock into moves that really are not good for him. So I go for my Z-Earthquake here, now that I know he can't bring in Mandibuzz to just tank, like, avoid it. And it does some pretty good damage. I probably could have gone for something like a Psychium Z and just done a... or Steelium Z. Oh no, I did have bullet punch on him just in case there was that nine tails and this does a lot of damage but god that thing is bulky it's just got so much health it's so hard to kill it but uh i'm faster than it so i can just go for another big damage on this turn hit him with the eq and it's more than enough to take out the blissey so blissey is gone now but with those stealth rocks still up i really can't do anything here comes in fox news which this is another one where brendan made a cool set with this but, in doing that, he had nothing that could really do that much- Okay, that did more damage than I thought it did, but... That's not really enough to kill him. It was a hidden power ground. 
So that's all neat and stuff, but nah, man, you can't do that. You can't do a non-stab move when you gotta kill things. So that, that didn't help him, but yeah, I think the, the big turning point was that Cartana staying in. If he had, if he had switched out Cartana into Blissey, it would have been kosher. He would have had that battle because I never could have done anything else to him. And at this point I switch X because I'm like, I don't know what he's going to do. Let's hit him with the attack drop. And then I realized, oh shit, wait, I take double damage from Stealth Rock, so high tech just dies. But he does still lock into his Shadow Sneak, so I see, okay. I don't want to bring my uh, Metagross back in. So in comes Landfill, who's at half health at best, takes some Stealth Rocks damage. So at this point I'm like, shit, okay he's locked into a physical attack. Let's see how much the Shadow Sneak does. At 55 HP, it does 22. So even if I didn't set up this Reflect, I still could have taken one more attack. And he is now Ghost type, so I would be able to bring Metagross in and hit him with the... Uh... Oh no, he would be faster than me with his shadow sneak over my bullet punch. But yeah, now after the wall goes up, now it's only doing 10 damage. So now I can just attack and landfill is good to go as long as these hydro pumps don't miss. Even though it doesn't matter because I'm healing more than he's doing damage every turn. Oh no, I'm doing actually one less healing than he was doing damage. So this should bring me down to 31. Yep. But yeah, hydro pump comes out. It's more than enough damage. Takes him out. I didn't want to volt switch because that was unnecessary, but yeah. That battle, if I had set up my uh, sticky web earlier, there would have been a chance that I could have won it earlier, or could have won it with more Pokemon, and if he had not switched out that Kartana, he definitely would have, or if he had switched out that Kartana and brought in Blissey, I wouldn't have been able to bring anybody in and keep them alive after those Stealth Rocks and be able to kill that Blissey, so it was a good battle, but there were definitely mistakes that were made that cost the battle for Brendan, so... Sorry, my dude, but I get to advance to the next round of the playoffs, so I'm going to be fighting Evan next week because that battle's already happened, so that's going to be fun. Tune in and watch something happen for week two of the PBL playoffs. Ming.